Welcome. Uh, who are you and, and can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah. So my name is Brian McGlynn and I'm COO of Daver Networks. Ah, great. So um, what are the customers, you know, who are your customers and what vertical markets are you uh, selling into? So who are our customers? Our customer is very specifically system integrators and network value added resellers. So we sell direct, we don't sell directly to end customers, we sell yeah. through system integrators and virus. So, so a network added value reseller, what does that mean exactly and what do they do? Yeah, so, so network integrators or system integrators, so these are companies that are, that are throughout the US, throughout Europe, they have um, local knowledge, specific customers in their region, so in the Midwest there'd be lots of um, system integrators very well known there, the likes of NetTech Corp, so they would build traditional enterprise networks. Okay. So over the last 10, 20 years, the likes of these network integrators would be building out branch networks, MPLS networks, um, data centers, but now they're struggling and they need to move into the IoT space. Okay. So we as a, a data IoT platform mm -hmm. are helping those system integrators and VARs access this market. No, no. what would be the difference between a system integrator and a VAR, for example? They're very, they're very similar, but okay. I really I think it's classified as system integrators get a little bit more hands-on. Okay, that yeah, makes sense. They are very similar though. Now, so your customers are, you're, you're not selling directly to the customers. Do you have ever any um, direct uh, relationship with the end customer or not? Yeah, from a, from a technical point of view, we would. Now, the, the SI or system integrator would always be the lead. So, so okay. they know the customer very well. They know the IT directors were brought in as part of an overall solution. Okay. So you don't just buy Davers Ruben platform, you also have hardware that's associated with the solution or service. So, so the system integrator fronts everything and more a piece of the overall solution or service that's delivered hmm. to the end customer. Now that's interesting now, well, can you give any estimates in terms of the size of that piece, like a network platform? I mean it is a network platform, is that what you would classify your product as? Really an IoT platform. Okay, IoT, an IoT platform, yeah, yeah. sorry. So what percentage would that be of the overall, do you think, I know it, it probably runs over time, but just roughly speaking, if you squinted your eyes, what would be the percentage? In terms of? In terms of overall, I guess, investment, you know, uh, that a customer would end up making through the, obviously it's through the system integrator or, or yeah, VAR, but. It really depends, I and mean, if we talk about verticals and solutions, it depends on mm -hmm the vertical, the solution and the service. Okay. So um, there is a lot of hardware involved and some less it's more just about data and dome sensors. Um, so those, I think later on in this interview we'll be talking about different uh, okay. vertical set solutions. Sure. So it, it varies from 30% up to 70%. I okay, think, so, well that, so, that's interesting. Yeah. So that gives, that gives us a, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a, a little bit of a range then. So, well we, so it's a IoT platform. Describe what is an IoT platform? What is the product? Yeah, I suppose a good way to start kind of describing an IoT platform, and there's more and more of these, these coming out every month, as, as a lot of you guys know. Um, probably, you know, if you benchmark against what platforms you may, may have heard of, mm. today I'd say one of the most well-known um, IoT platforms would be Jasper. Okay. So Jasper Wireless, Jasper Technologies, mm. they've renamed mm. to Jasper Technologies, based yeah. just here in, in Mountain View. Um, they've been going since um, 2006. They've raised... They've raised over 200 million in VC, and you know they're they're built to be the first IoT billion-dollar company, the first IoT right. platform company to IPO. Right. Um, so really, they're leading the way in this market. Um, so we, Davra, we've started. We're a little bit later to the game. We started in 2011, okay. building our IoT platform. So where Jasper, uh, there's also the likes of uh, Exceed and Teamworks and so forth. Where Jasper focus on is they have their platform. And they sell it into the service providers. So they same they thing as you then. Yeah, very similar okay. to us. They do there's differences obviously. They do mm -hmm. a lot on billing, whereas we don't do anything on billing. Oh, okay. But their their go to market is true service providers. So they provide in their pl IoT platform for service providers to build out solutions and okay. services. Okay. So what air platform air platform is targeted at, as I said earlier in the interview, is, is system integrators and virus. So I suppose I didn't really answer your question. So what our, what our platform does is it allows, so it allows the system integrators to offer these services. And that specifically is um, 
we allow what's called slightly technical, we allow zero touch deployment. So get this solution out in the field. So get uh -huh. these sensors out, get these uh, what we call IoT gateways out in the field and collect all this data. So if we're talking IoT, we're really talking a lot about data. Right, so right. networks and data. Okay. So we need we at the edge we collect all this data in what's called a fog layer. I won't go into too much into that. Okay. We collect all this data talking to different, say, SCADA systems, telematic systems, uh, J1939 system, collect it at the edge, um, do first order analytics at the edge. Oh. So not all the data, you know, right. this is common. Right. So not all yep. the data is going up into the cloud. So we do okay. a first order analytics at the edge, then we collect all the data, store it efficient, all this big data stuff we use, you know, the Cassandra database. I won't go into the technical details, but we store it efficiently, read fast, write fast. Then we take it up another level and we make sense of that data. So we build applications specific to the use case that we're involved. So we make it very easy for system integrators to turn around okay. a solution, whether it be for connected farming, like smart tractors, or um, distributed automation in utilities, transportation, connected roadways. So we make the data available, and we have tools, drag and drop applications, just to build a very customized solution for the customer. Gotcha, so gotcha. That's, okay. that's what we do. I understand. Now, now, where does the system integrator come in? And so they've got your IoT platform. Yeah. And then where do they come in? And, and what's their value add then? Yeah. Well, the, the system integrator, they have the customers. You know, they they're they're in this field. They're they're, they're local. They're guys. very specific to the verticals. Um, not no? really. It depends. It d does depend. So some some resellers will will want to focus on transportation. So okay. ro some resellers will be very focused on um, utilities. But there's there's a lot of crossover on the and these um, okay. and these verticals. So I'll give you an example. So if you're talking to a large utilities company and you want to connect their just distributed edge, these utility companies they also have large fleets of trucks. Right. So you know you, you're the system integrator for this large utilities company. You're connecting up their edge uh, distribution network. Then also you can still you can connect up their transportation network. Right. So there is crossover. So a lot of the integrators they will look at multiple. IoT verticals. Okay, yeah. and so then you're saying they've got they they understand they have the customer, mm. therefore they understand their network, they understand yeah. how they how exactly, they operate, yeah. and then they integrate it within that environment. I mean, well, well, yes. Yeah, so that's true. They also have the trust of the customer. They know them very well. They know the engineers in there. Right. They 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 know how they operate. But then what they also do is they they front the solution. So when I talk about a solution, so you have this IoT platform, yeah. but also there's, there's the gateway. So who do you get the gateway off? Do you get the gateway off uh, the likes of Cisco Systems? Do you get the gateway off BB Electronics? Whoever mm. these mm. Um, get an Intel variant of a gateway. Mm. So who 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 provides the gateway? Okay. So who provides the sensors underneath? So if you're talking about who provides the telematic sensors, who provides those? Mm. So they so in a solution the system integrator could be working with five different companies right. in the background to pull together right. sensors, gateway, platform, who's the service provider? So are they going to use AT are they going to go with AT and T or are they going to go with Verizon, 4G, 3G? Mm. So what's the after after sales service? Is it hosted on prem? Mm. Is mm. it hosted like is it hosted in the company's data center? Is it hosted on AWS? Is it ho hosted on the system integrators private Cloud exactly. So these are all the things that they, that, that they look after, mm -hmm. and just you know all this kind of all these other pieces, the customer doesn't really see. Right. Right. You know, so that's really what the um, and there's one price, there's one there's one uh, PO, one SKU, yeah. one support contract. Right. So that's what the what the SI. No, that offers. makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. So let let's talk. Uh, let's swing it back to your company and and um, how do you guys make money then? What is the business model? How do, what yeah. do you sell exactly? Yeah. So as I said, as I said, we sell the we sell this platform that enables the SIs to bring these solutions okay. to market. Um, so how we make money is, it's a direct once-off uh, license fee. Oh. And yeah. One and time only. Does it? Yeah. And there's a very, there's a very specific reason for that. Um, and also there's a twenty percent maintenance charge. For so it's a very it's a for, traditional. For your uh, the maintenance charge. It's a year. Charge? Yeah. Okay. It's a year. And it's a, that's that's eighteen. That you charge to the system integrator. We charge to the system integrator, yeah, and they build it into their costs. Sure. Um, so it's a once-off cost. Now we don't do we don't do SaaS. We don't do any kind of as a X as a service model, because what we do is we allow 
the integrator to do that. Right. So the integrator, a lot of the times the integrator will bundle this all up and he'll decide, okay, if this customer wants to go with a SaaS model and it's up to him. So we keep it very simple and it works very well with, with the system integrators. Mm. So although it sounds like, oh, it's very archaic, very old model and why haven't you gone service? Yeah. But that's, that's it and it works very well because they like it, it goes through the SIs. And really the SI, if you want to build scale mm. in your business, Obviously, SPs is one angle, but the SIs, you know, the likes of, you know, Intel's or the Cisco's of this world, they have, uh, you know, in Ireland, where I'm from, in mm. Europe, a very small country, 5 million people, there's over, uh, for example, Cisco have over 20 SIs in Ireland, Ireland's tiny. So that's the volume. So if you're accessing these SIs, you can really get scale for your platform. And then they decide uh, essentially on the business model that they present to the yeah, customer. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the customer and what are the costs then? If we were, if we were to have a checklist, what are the costs that the customer, they're watching the video right now, and mm -hmm. what, what do they need to think about? What are their costs going into a project, going into a new, let's say, greenfield connected project in some way or form? What, what are their costs? Mm. Yeah, well, I suppose, I suppose maybe the best way to, to answer that is to try and take a worked example. And maybe if you're saying saying costs, you really have to build in, like, what are they going to get out of it really? Okay. like. So okay, th yeah. I think they're, they're very much related if right. you're talking about right. costs. Um, I think I was talking to you earlier about the, the, connected, the connected school bus. Yeah, that, talked about, yeah, talked to, yeah that that We're working that. on with various customers throughout the U.S. It's very much a U.S. market specific. Uh, U.S. and Canada. So who's the customer for the connected school bus then? Really, it's the school districts, so school the district. independent school right. districts. So we're here, obviously, Pleasanton. Yeah. So does it Pleasanton independent school districts, which encompasses probably about five or six, uh, you know, schools. Mm. So mm. you're selling to the district, and the district, um, yeah, so the district, you're selling to the district, and the IT director. Is Within the district. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. Now, and now what, okay, so if we're using the district as an example, what are they budgeting for? And, and what, you know, what are the costs, what are their costs going to be? Yeah, well, I, I think it really starts at the, biz, with the, at the business case level and then you look at the costs. So okay. what, what, what the schools are trying to do is, um, is really these IT directors, and, and I think when you're talking about, you know, IoT and having to talk to the business people, really I think it's the likes of the IT directors and the CEOs, they need to move over to the business. Do you know what I mean? Like, more talking to the IT directors, right. CIOs, and those guys coming up to board level and talking about this, as opposed to, you know, the accountants and the business people, and then the IT person being outside. Now, with, with IoT and technology being so important, they need to be in the boardroom as well. Mm. So, and that's But are they leading the charge? You're implying that the IT well, folks are actually leading the charge versus the business? Folks but they're move, but they're moving towards the business because they see that that technology okay. is so important for the business. So now right. it's not just all this there's techie stuff over here, and this is where it really happens. You really need to bring the technical people into into the business side of things. Hmm. So for in, in these uh, independent school districts, the IT directors are leading innovation and technology in these schools. Hmm. So what they're looking at, okay, a lot of most of these schools are connected very well. You know, they have Chromebooks everywhere, they've iPads, they've they've Wi-Fi everywhere. Certainly in this area. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. true, true, true. Um, so what they're looking at is, okay, so what else can we can we connect up our school buses? And they're looking for so they're looking for reasons. Well, why should we like Wi-Fi? So they're coming up with concepts of. Um, Students learn anywhere. Learn, nice. yeah, nice. on the way to school, on the way home from school. Mm -hmm. You're still learning. Mm. So a school bus can be a place of learning. Mm. So, so this this model is coming up now, and, and IT directors are leading the charge in this. Um, so they're looking at um, hooking the buses up so the kids. BYOD, bring your own devices, they have the Chromebooks anyway. So they come onto the buses, they can directly... Their phones. Exactly, whatever, yeah. yeah. But they can correct, connect up directly into the school's IT infrastructure. So they're talking, I don't know if the US has a Moodle system for homework. Um, so they can do their homework, they can do their reading, they can check up on the latest news mm -hmm. within the school. Um, so that's, that's a very strong business case for connecting up school buses. Also, within school districts, they're talking about um, facility management. So if they can bus more students to, to this school, maybe they won't have to open up another school over here. And they're justifying it because these buses, although they're spending more time on the school buses, it's productive time. Right, they're still right, learning right, inside right. the bus. Okay. So 
when we started this about two years ago, this was, it was a very nice use case, but also they had to justify the cost, right. as you said. Right. So yes, yeah, students learn, that's brilliant, and there's budget from federal for this. From, for, so for that's how skill. they're justifying the cost. Well, well, there's not so much an ROI in terms of fiscal ROI, but there's more of just a, a value ROI. Well, if you're saving on facility management as well, there is a, a, a financial. Right. financial. You mean not having to open a new school? Exactly, yeah. 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 Right, right. yeah but, but also what the IT director is trying to do is, okay, so if we've connected this bus, well, what else can we do? You know, okay, they, they're doing their homework, that's brilliant, but is there anything else we can do? Can we look at safety on the buses? Can we ensure the buses aren't going over speed limits? Simple things like that. Can we ensure um, that there's no, nothing wrong with the school engine? Mm. You know, so mm. looking at, as we mm. said, sensors, telematics inside mm. buses, collecting all that sort of information, doing location services for the mammies at home, um, video cameras, securities, uh, we've been talking, gunshot detection you know I know you don't need to talk, like talking about that but the reality right. so there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of safety things for the parents okay. so in some districts in Texas like these school kids are on the buses for over an hour wow. so you know connecting it has a lot of value so uh, yeah I think you're right in what you're saying about the costs it is to do it's not f purely financial although it is with f facilities management mm -hmm. but there mm -hmm. is other kind of benefits um, education and safety. I exactly, mean, you're yeah. extending the education, yeah, education, and safety, and, and safety. Yeah. Wow. No, I like that. Okay. So now that that's the that's the the benefits. Now, if we look at that scenario, what would be the cost that they're going to have to incur for that? Then? Is yeah. It per school bus basis, or what? What's the business model that they they come up against? Well, again, it depends on how the SI wants to sell it to them. Okay. But if I look at the different pieces that is required in current connected school buses that we're doing today, so you start at the very bottom level, there's sensors involved, okay? So talking money, these, these, these sensor boxes connect you directly to the engine of a bus. So you get your speed, you get right. your idling, you get any faults on the engine. So those boxes cost roughly 100 bucks a bus, okay? Yep. So that's, 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 not, that's not much now. Um, the next level above that is you need your gateway to connect you to the outside world. So you need the 4G connection, Wi-Fi mm. connection. Um, so that's the hardware inside the bus. Then the next level, you obviously need your SIM cards. So you need an AT&T, Verizon. Mm -hmm. So you have your data plan as mm -hmm. well there. Mm -hmm. So there's costs there. Okay. Then moving up another level, you need air platform. Um, to take sensor data. To take sensor data, data, to make sure the network's always available. If the backhaul is gone on 4G, nothing's coming out of the bus anyway. So you need to manage the network so and you need to manage the mm -hmm. data. Okay. Um, and then you need the ongoing service and support from the SI okay. as well. The only other element you need is you need a, an electrical fitter who actually goes into the into this asset, whether it be a bus, an oil rig, and he needs to physically kit it out. Yeah. He needs to, you know, get out his screwdriver and, and fit it in. That's a pretty important piece of it as well. Yeah. And that's a once it's a once off right. Not piece of work, cost, but it's it's very important mm. as well. So there are all the elements and then you add them up and that's that's the price. And okay. how it's been sold as a service per bus or whatever, that's really up to the integrator. Mm. Mm. But um yeah. No, just out of curiosity, do you have a rough range of what a what a per bus would be in terms of the cost or um, Are we talking a thousand dollars a bus, ten thousand dollars a bus? Is this a, in terms of a once-off or a? Well, the upfront cost. I mean, yeah. The upfront per bus. No, I'm just just wondering, just to put things in perspective for the people watching the video. So, if you're doing per bus per month. Or, yeah, or per bus up front, and then uh, you know, I'm just wondering, just the scale. What's the scale of uh, investment here that we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I think if you if you go on a per bus per month, you'd be looking at st in in ranges, depending on the services, because there's different services that you can or cannot. You're looking at ranges from 80 bucks, uh, maybe to 130. Oh, well, that's pretty narrow. Okay, that's a pretty yeah, good. That's yeah, a, that, that's yeah. Pretty so accurate, you're talking about then. different okay. data levels of service. All right. All right. Um, That'd be on a five-year contract usually, five-year contract per month. But a lot of times as well ah, with these... Five-year contract, okay. Yeah. And that's generally then the business model in this particular case, the SI would approach is on a per bus per month? Yeah, that, per that's, month per yeah that's specifically for transportation mm -hmm. and connected school buses. Okay. And it's pretty, you know, there's a lot of, you know, the likes of Fleet Maddox who would be in connected transportation, but they'd be more looking at kind of fleets and, and they would be in the range of 60, 40 to 60 per month per Per okay. vehicle, so okay. this connected school bus is a little bit, a lot more advanced. Yeah, than that. but if you take, you know, the number of trips per month, let's say it's four weeks times, you know, times five, you have twenty trips mm -hmm. times two there and back. You know, there's forty trips. 
up to an hour per trip. Mm. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. there's 40 hours of learning and, and safety yeah, 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 and being yeah, yeah. able to, so it's actually, mm. and divide that, amortize it over the number of students that are in the bus. Mm. I don't know, it, it, that sounds like a pretty yeah. good deal to me.